This video gives an introduction to state space models. So what we're going to do here is look at state space models and in particular we're going to start by looking at their origins and then move on to look at their properties and their use in control. The first few resources are going to focus on the origins of state space models. So questions like what is a state space model? How do I derive a model to represent a given system? And linearization. Now viewers may find it useful first to review the sections on first and second order modeling and you'll see there's a number of videos on the website looking at those topics. State space models are defined in terms of so-called system states. So one of the first things we've got to do is understand what we mean by that. Now, states are properties which change with time. That's key. So we're looking at things like speed, which is the derivative of displacement. Or you could have the derivative of speed was acceleration. Temperature can change with time, so it has a derivative. Pressure can change with time, so it has a derivative, and so on. So that's the key thing. Some sort of property of a system which can change with time. And these will be states. A model is, ter is defined in terms of the derivatives of the states. I should really say a state space model. Now the key point that is made is if you know the derivatives of all of the states of a system, then you can capture the behavior of the system. Some examples then. We'll start with the mass damper. Now, a mass damper could be something like a vehicle, a car. So the engine provides a drive force. Here you'll see I've put a force here, which causes the vehicle to accelerate along the road. And things like wind and friction with the road provide drag. Now, you might want to say, how do I model such a scenario? There is a slower discussion in the videos in the modeling sections. So here we're just going to do it very quickly. So a typical way to approach this is to do a force balance. So you'll see the overall force applied, I've separated into two components, F1 and F2. So F2 provides an acceleration force, it accelerates the mass, and F1 basically deals with the friction components, whatever those friction components are. And that gives us a very simple equation, F equals F1 plus F2. So the total engine force is divided between those two components. Now I can actually write down equations for F1 the friction component, F2 the acceleration component, and here they are. So F1 equals some constant times the velocity. So a simple assumption is the friction increases linearly with velocity. And anyone who's been on a bicycle will recognize that. The faster you go, the more the wind resistance. And the acceleration force, standard Newton's law, F2 equals m dv dt. So if I combine those and write F equals F1 plus F2, then I get this well-known model for a mass damper system. m dv dt plus bv equals F. Now, this gives us a simple first-order differential equation. Now I want to ask myself, OK, is there a state space model equivalent for this? The mass damper then can be thought of as having a single state. And we're going to choose that state to be velocity. And you can see why I've chosen velocity, because that was what was in the equation. Now, for a state space model, we simply, and this is the key word, we're going to rearrange the equation so that we give a focus on the derivative of the state. So we're asking ourselves, what is the derivative of the state? And I've decided that the state is velocity. So here's my original equation m dv dt plus bv equals f, and I can write that as an equation which gives the derivative of the state explicitly. Here it is, dv dt, the derivative of the state, and you'll see it's given as minus b over m times the velocity plus 1 over m times f. So the derivative can now be expressed with matrix notation. So you'll see I've written dv dt is some matrix A times the velocity, plus some matrix B times the input, 
which here is the force. And A is minus B over M, capital B is 1 over M, and you'll see here is my generic state space equation. So V dot, the derivative of the state, is given by AV plus BF, and I've been a bit clumsy there. You should note that those two Bs are not the same. So the key thing is the state derivative is linear in the state and the input. You'll see the derivative here, V dot, is got some matrix times V, so it's linear in the state, and some matrix B times F, so it's linear in the input. Second example, let's take a resistor capacitor in series. So here you'll see I've got a resistor R1 and a capacitor C. And classic modeling, people would say, all right, there's a voltage across the resistor and there's a voltage across the capacitor. So what I'm going to do now is use Kirchhoff's law to model this. And so standard Kirchhoff's law says the total voltage is in the circuit sum to zero. So here the applied voltage V is the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the capacitor, or V equals V1 plus V2. I can now write down what V1 and V2 are. So V1 is the current times R1, or R1 dQ dt, where Q represents the charge, and V2 is Q over C. Now clearly, I can combine those together, and there's a typo here, so I'll rewrite that. So I get R1 Q dot, plus Q over C equals V. So there's my model for a resistor capacitor in series. What about the state space model then? Now, a resistor capacitor can be thought of as having a single state, and we're going to choose as the state the charge across the capacitor. To find a state space model, all we're going to do is rearrange the model we've got to define explicitly the derivative of the state, which we've chosen to be Q. So here, you'll see with my original model, R dQ dt plus 1 over CQ equals V. If I rearrange that to define the state derivative explicitly, I can say dQ dt, so that's the derivative of my state, equals minus 1 over RC times Q plus 1 over R times V. And so if I now finally move to matrix notation, I can write that dQ dt is some matrix A times Q plus some matrix B times V. And that matrix A is minus 1 over RC, and the matrix B is 1 over R. And so I end up with what is called a state space model. You see Q dot equals AQ plus V. And the key thing here is the state derivative is written as a linear dependence on the state with a coefficient of a and a linear dependence on the input with a coefficient of b. Final example then. Let's consider some form of tank. And here you'll see the tank has got an inflow f in and an outflow f out. And what we're interested in is how does the depth of the tank depend on the flow in and the flow out. Now, this modeling is moderately straightforward. You'll see the rate of change of volume in the tank, so ADH dt, is given by flow in minus flow out. And if we make a simplifying assumption, which is that the flow out is got a linear dependence on the depth, which is true for small changes in depth, then I can come up with a constant k and that equation we've got there. So KPF out equals rho GH. So if I put those two together, here is the model for the depth in my tank. ADH dt equals F in minus rho GH over KP. Now, I can rearrange this to define the derivative of the state explicitly. So if my state here is given as h, the depth, then you see dh dt, the derivative of the state, has got some matrix A times h and some matrix B times flow in. And again, I've been clumsy here using the same variable A twice, so you'll have to excuse that. But you can see the matrix A is given by minus rho g over a k p, where this a is the cross-sectional area of the tank. And the matrix b 
is given by 1 over cross-sectional area. And so we've now got a model in state space form where you see the derivative of the state is cross-sectional area times h. Sorry, now I'm getting myself mixed up. It's some matrix A times h plus some matrix B times the input. So the state is linear. State derivative is linear in the state and linear in the input. So what have we done here? We've illustrated a state-space model derivation for systems that can be modelled by a simple first-order ODE. And what this amounts to is a minor rearrangement and expressing the model as an equation which defines the state derivative with linear dependence on a state and an input. So in other words, if you have a standard first-order model of this form, t dx dt plus x equals ku, I can rearrange that to write the derivative on its own, so x dot equals minus 1 over t times x plus k over t times u, and minus 1 over t is your matrix A, and k over t is your matrix B. So you end up with a state space model, x dot equals ax plus bu. And you'll notice it's common to use matrix names A and B for the coefficients of the state and the input, respectively. And as you've noticed in this video, sometimes that does cause overlaps with names that you want to use elsewhere. And in general, you'll have to be aware of that and be careful.